Good morning everyone and welcome back to Milo Farms. Well summer has officially began on the farm. The irrigation has come on. Without water we wouldn't have anything but sagebrush in the valley here. Prior to the irrigation system the only place that had greenery was down by the river. The irrigation system was put in and that's what greened up the entire valley. A few years ago, I inherited the job of what they call the rotation manager for the irrigation ditch in our area, and it's a volunteer position, doesn't pay anything, and it's more just a lot of work. But the job of that person is to go around and make sure the ditch is all cleaned out, ready to go for the year, and then set up the schedule to make sure that everybody gets their water on the days that they're supposed to and everything works out well and it's kind of a go-between for all the different users of the water. So that all has been done in the last couple weeks. All the cleaning's been done and a couple days ago the water came on so here we have it. But today what I wanted to talk about was a setup that I have here for the pump that we have on the farm and this is something I never really could find uh, what would work exactly right um, the pump is just a standard, uh, this particular one is a Red Lion one horsepower pump, so it's not a real high quality pump, but it works just fine. Um, but the issue we always had was the water in the ditch would stop, whether there was a malfunction or a clog, or somebody put their head gate in at the wrong time, not following the schedule, and the pump would then run dry. So I looked and looked and looked and could never find a switch that would switch the water off when the pump ran out of water for a pump of this size. I could find them for small pumps that ran on, for example, 120 volts AC or alternating current, but never could find one that ran on a large pump, a 240 volt AC pump, such as this one. So I looked and looked and looked and I went online and I found what we have here. And this is all homemade. This is just kind of an example of what a person could do but definitely, you know, do what you think is right for your own place. So what I have here is I've dug this tube down into the ground and on the front side of it, on the ditch side, I've drilled holes so the water from the ditch can run into it. And then on the inside, the foot valve is at the very bottom. Can't see it down there. And then I have a piece of all thread here. That's this pipe or this rod. And then I've put a little piece of pipe on here for a weight to give it enough weight to activate the switch. And at the very bottom in the dark down there is a toilet float. And as the water drops down, this drops down and turns the pump off. And then when it comes back up, it allows the pump to run. This switch came off of Amazon. I'll put a link to it in the description. And what it is called is a tank fill switch. Uh, there's two different styles. There's one that turns the pump on when the tank is full and there's another one that turns the pump on when the tank is empty. The one that we have here turns the pump on when the tank is full. So when the water comes in, raises the rod and takes the stop here away from the lever and then you can manually turn the lever on and that starts the pump. And as you can see, the sprinklers are coming on. And then, for example, if the water ran low, the rod would drop down and it would shut the pump off. And then when the water refilled, it would come back in and it would just sit there. Originally, I'd put another set of nuts down underneath here to turn the pump back on when the water returned. But what I found is if there was a very small supply of water, the pump would just cycle on and off and on and off, which was unnecessary and quite hard on the pump. So I took those off, so now all it does is just stop the water, and then I have to come out and manually restart it. But it protects the pump and has worked out really well. About five years now, we've had the same setup and the same pump with no issues. So we use several different styles of irrigating here on the farm. We have the pump that you can see that runs several different sprinklers here on the fruit trees that we have around here, as well as some fruit trees up by the yard, and then waters the edge of the grass there. And then in the lower sections of the pasture, out here towards the back, 
or over to the far right, we flood irrigate that area. So this ditch runs all the way down, and as you can see, it's flooding out there right now, flooding the back section. So we do that because flood irrigation doesn't use any electrical, it doesn't uh, cost anything extra other than just sending the water down that way. Whereas running the pump does cost a little bit of electricity and we just do that in the areas that we absolutely have to. So hopefully that's given a little bit of insight on the watering on the farm and particularly on this design for the uh, switch that will protect the pump if it does run out of water. If anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. And we'll have another video about another irrigation pump setup that we have on the farm here uh, coming up probably next week. So hope everybody has a great day. Please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Milo Farms.